Welcome back everyone. This is part two. We're going to pick up where we left off in our last video where we were discussing how to set up your telescope mount. And in this part two, we're going to talk about how to balance your telescope and we're going to talk about home. Where is home and why is it so hard to get a straight answer about home? I mean, seriously, how can a topic be so hard? So without further delay, let's get on with the video. everything out and you want to go ahead and connect all of your cables to your mount just so it has an idea of where everything is at so all right these cables this scope is not usually on this mount I got lazy and didn't want to hook up get the other one out and this is my one power cable that comes off and will go down to my power source okay now, let's worry about getting our balance in this direction. I'm gonna loosen up my clutch, and I'm gonna spin this around, and you see my weight side is extremely heavy for this particular scope. Now, what we do wanna do is take off your lens caps, because they're false weight, and make sure your dew shield is extended all the way out before you try to do your balancing, okay? And until you get to know your setup, this is a bit of a trial and error thing, okay? Now the counterweight side is really, really heavy. So let's loosen up both the counterweights and let's slide them up until you can feel things start to get in balance. I'm gonna tighten them up right here. And let's see where it lands, okay? The weight side is still heavier, so let's bring them closer. All right, that feels better, but since I'm not a fan of having the air gap, I like them both to be together, so we will split the difference, put them together, and let's see how that goes. All right, it's starting to look like the telescope side is heavier. But you notice what we're missing here? We're missing that toe guard. I am putting my toe's life at risk. So let's put this screw back on the bottom because I would really like to keep my toes today. I'd hate to have my boss say I wasn't wearing proper PPE for doing a scope building here. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, now that we've got this section balanced, we need to get this side balanced. So we'll loosen up our clutch again. And when I let it go, notice that the, um, the camera side is dipping. So this has to slide forward in the mount to get us some balance. Let's go ahead and rotate this up and get my, uh, my hand saver here. All right, and we are going to loosen up the saddle and we are going to push this up, uh, let's say, let's go for a centimeter worth of distance and see how that works for us, okay? But keep in mind, as we shift things up, it could also shift this balance. So it is a little, you know, a little act of back and forth, trial and error. All right, notice that it is still dipping down. But what else is missing from all of this is, I haven't hooked up these. That will definitely play in my weight and how things are lined up, so I'll plug in my camera. But we need to shift it further up in the saddle. Okay. too far. Now 
Now the glass side is too heavy. And that was me moving it a half a centimeter. That's all it took to shift that weight that much. So let's rotate things back. Let's split that difference. What's nice is on the bottom of these rails on this telescope have um, measurement marks. Use those increments to uh, help you find your balance now. Glass end is still a little bit too heavy, all right? And yes, it always takes me about this long. This is normal, but once you find out Let's see, I need to shift it back just a touch. And that's probably just a couple millimeters worth of shift. But until you get to know your scope and things and where they need to be, it's gonna take you a few minutes to get this right. Now, if I was to put the Raven scope on here, I know exactly where it needs to go. I have it written with a Sharpie along the bars. And see, that's nice. Pretty level there. I can push it equally on both sides and I get about the same reaction. So this area, this is in balance and this is in balance. But notice it was only on one side. And typically I do everything on one side. But there are some people out there that like to carry this to the next level. And the next level is good. It will definitely improve things for you. But if your scope balances on that side, what is it gonna to take to balance it on this side? And you try to split the difference. Sometimes they're already balanced if you have one of those perfectly balanced scopes. But like me, I've got more toys on one side of the scope than on the other. I couldn't perfectly balance. But you see, that side is heavier. Now I can split the difference with the other side, maybe pull this out Let's see, I need to push it forward just a touch. Let's see what that does. All right, that looks good. Let's compare it back to the other side. And I know it seems like I'm kind of careless flipping this thing around, but I've just got that much faith in this saddle for holding everything. So now the scope side's heavy. And some of this is, is think about where you're going to be imaging in the night. Is your scope going to be on this side all night long and imaging? Or is it going to be on the other side? Because that's the side that's more important to get balanced. Okay? I might separate this out just a little bit. Good, let's swing it around. Don't worry, it's not gonna fall. And let's see how it is over here. I made it a little bit heavier on this side, but I moved this counterweight out just a bit. So let's split that difference. And we'll call it close enough for close enough for me. It will work. Alright. And the other thing to think about is is can you get it to balance in this direction again? This is always the hard way. You see, definitely heavier on the camera end. But why is that? I have my motor for my focuser and my baby tail rat over here. And that's where the weight is on this back end that's keeping things. So I could shift this forward, you know, and split the difference but typically, I'll be honest, I balance on one side and I let it ride. There will come a day when I'm ready to up my game and I will want to balance in both directions. All right, so now we're gonna go to the other Amy Astro out in the field. All right, folks, so we've had people ask, well, where is my home position? And honestly, home is 
where your heart is. It can be any position you want it to be, but the standard position is with everything lined up in a row along with your telescope. That's where most people have home. But some people have observatories that aren't very tall, so they choose to make home look like this. And that's perfectly legal to have this be your home. The home can also be this or this. It could be on the other side if you want it to be. Or it can be all the way over here. It's where you want it to be. The key is, is telling your computer where you've decided home is going to be. Now I know some people have dual scope rigs, so this is their home position. And this is because they've got their um, Los Mondi bar going across, and they've got a scope going into here with a dovetail and another scope coming out here like a double barrel. So this is their home position. So really home is where you want it to be. It's where your heart is and it's just that easy. So unlike me who surfed the internet for months trying to figure out what home was and had a ruler and a level and everything out, realize it can be wherever you want it as long as you tell your computer when you sign in, I sync my encoders for this, that's my home. Or I sync my encoders and say, that's my home. It could be anything you want it to be. Well, folks, I hope that answers some of your questions on how to go about setting up a telescope mount for those of you who have never done it before or just wanted to know the basic anatomy of what all is involved. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that little bit about uh, where is home. You know, it's, it's definitely where the heart is. And uh, excuse the way that version of Amy Astro looks, but you got to keep in mind she was camping. It was extremely hot out there, and you know what? There is no beauty contest in astronomy. We are all about the stars, and we work in the dark, so everybody's beautiful in the dark. Keep that in mind, okay? So don't go running or unsubscribing to me because you've seen the au naturel camping version. All right? So guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I do appreciate every one of you. If you like this kind of video, please take the time to like it, subscribe, and hit that alert bell so you can know when I upload new astro-related video, okay? I also have a website out there. It is just getting started, so we're starting to add more to it. But it is www amyastro.com. So come check me out over there. And as always, you will find me on Facebook as Amy Astro. So I look forward to hearing it from everybody. Leave me comments down below. You know I love answering them. And I can take the good and I can take the bad. Don't worry. Just tell me like it is and I can handle it, okay? And let me know if there's anything else you would like to see and I will incorporate it into a video or possibly a blog post over there on the website. Until next week, you guys, I hope you have some very clear skies, some great health, and I'll see y'all next week. I love you guys. Goodbye. I'm pretty sure Orion is waiting for his vitamins again, even though he's already had his kitty crack for the day. Sweet dreams, Orion.